Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in. So today we have with us a Renee Jane. Um, she is a holistic health and life coach. So um, I was first I first stumbled across you upon uh, Heather Chauvin's podcast. Heather Chauvin does a uh, mom is in control podcast and to anyone who is, has kids who is finding it overwhelming to keep it all together, check out her podcast. It's absolutely awesome. Um, but I was listening to you talking about your seven day uh, sugar challenge that you did and it initially pricked my ear because that's always been my personal struggle and battle so since then I've just been following you along on uh, Facebook and all of uh, avenues of social media so I really am honored to have you on my uh, show so um, can I ask you just to introduce yourself give everyone a, a, an intro and a bit of your background about yourself beautiful thank you by the way Emma and I, it's an honor to be here and I want to say also I adore Heather so I'm so I, I didn't know that was the connection so if I did I, I forgot um yeah great podcast and great person so um the long and short of it is uh, I got into this industry uh, about eight years ago professionally but it started way longer for me and um the, it started of course with my own personal stuff because I think that's how anybody I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an assumption, but most people who get into this kind of world, it's because they're healing their own stuff. And, uh, and so, you know, the journey, you know, the practices, all the things that I went through, um, the core of being in the middle of it and um, me craving it and overindulging it and, and uh, I also started to see over the course of time that it wasn't just about the sugar. It was also about a pattern that I had and a relationship that I had to food and my feelings and also my thoughts. And so uh, the bulk of what I do as a holistic nutritionist and life coach is I help people bring that in the food piece, like getting that in order, because there's so many aspects to that, you know, which we can talk about, but there's the physical piece, there's, the, you know, what's going on in your brain with dopamine and hormones and all that. And then there's also the, the thoughts that we have that kind of maybe drive us to put our hand in the bag of candy. <laughs> and then there's also, uh, you know, our taste buds aspect. And then there's a lot of emotions, you know, and so there's so much there. Um, but this is definitely a passion of mine that, uh, you know, I, I feel called to do. I didn't think I'd be doing this. I used to think I'd be like an architect or something, but, uh, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> or an artist or something. And I, it's funny how, you know, I still build things and I teach and it's like, I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing. But, uh, you know, you, you don't realize how much when you get clear on, uh, finding that alignment and harmony in your body and like the holistic perspective of the thoughts and the emotions and the alignment with food, how much that really can open you up to, to helping and doing what it is that you want to be doing and need to be doing. Right. Yeah, completely. And I think that, you know, this is exactly along the path that I've come down because it's that, that feeling of wanting to reach for so you know i'm a fitness instructor by trade and doing uh diet after diet after diet and it's you come to realize that actually it's not about the next diet it's not to do with anything outside of yourself and nothing's really ever going to change until you start going internal right yeah exactly yeah it's um it's one of my pet peeves actually and i see it so often and everywhere of um you just like a, a simple example is like lose 15 pounds in 15 days or <laughs> get the bikini body and all these things that we are so accustomed to seeing. And um, what it does is it sounds beautiful and shiny object and we want, it's okay that we want the magic pill, like most of us do. Mm -hmm. But the path and the reality of that path is that it must be unique to you and so it's really about finding what works best for your body and so you know whether you work with me or emma or the hundreds of other people out there find somebody that can really help you know you like that's <laughs> and like be very unique about your approach to your body and the way you 
you fix things, I guess. If, um, yeah, and that's the thing, that's the issue that there is with our, our industry, really, that you know, people want the quick fix, which is why you will see it advertised everywhere out there. And people go for it in their hundreds. But yet, when we, we actually come down to it, it, it just doesn't work. And this is what I love realizing with the people that do come on and coaching and, and you know, researching and listening to people uh, like, like you, Renee. It's, it's really incredible about what can be achieved when you start to look at yourself as an in, individual and realize that it's not just going to work for everybody. Yeah. And by the way, that's also what makes, um, I think, sugar so intriguing is in is it's kind of a quick fix <laughs> mm -hmm. in itself. And um, I always like to preface when I talk about sugar with anybody on it, that I'm not like anti-sugar because sometimes people tune out because they think this woman is going to try to get me to never eat sugar ever again. <laughs> and our it triggers us and our defenses go up. And, um, the reality is I love sugar and I spent most of my life eating a lot of it. So I'm very like accustomed to that craving and desire for it. Um, the difference though, is that I, I started to slowly realize if you can see the end of the, you know, the end of the tunnel picture that it, it wasn't actually really about the sugar. You know, there was a time in my life when I remember thinking, how could I ever live without being able to eat a Snickers bar ever again? Like what is, what is life even worth if you can't eat a Snickers bar? Like I, I literally thought that and I thought it was so silly to even imagine not having it. <laughs> um, to now just really realizing that like I could care less about a Snickers bar. Just mostly, not that it doesn't taste good and I wouldn't probably find some enjoyment, but I just know so clearly how crappy my body would feel if I ate it, <laughs> right? And so there's there's a little bit of a, a, a path that we must go through and we you can't like go around it. You don't see that quote, this is the only way out is through. <laughs> kind of have to go. Through. And I think, you know that's a huge thing we get these it's also in this um sort of thought or feeling that oh it's okay for her because you you don't have the same cravings that i do so what what was it for you that or what was the first starting point when you be, were able to change and shift through that cycle or go around it as you say yeah it's a really good question um because i think that's what helped that's like you know when there's a a quote we often say is when it gets really hard, um, that's usually when you start to make a change. Uh, but hopefully we don't have to have like massive hard <laughs> to make the change, but sometimes we depends on the person. Yeah. Me, it was physical um, and it was migraine headaches. And so I had a lot of other health and hormonal issues at that time in my life that were really bothersome to me. Like I had lost my menstrual cycle and it wasn't because I was that person who was working out and like lost a bunch of weight. Like I was actually overweight and I was not the healthiest. Um, and I didn't know why my menstrual cycle just went away for almost a year. And no doctor did anything but just said, here's a pill, you know. <laughs> um, and then the other part was that these migraines, I was running a different business at the time and it was very time consuming for me. <laughs> Like, um, and so what was happening is that these migraines were starting to ruin my life and my relationships. I wasn't able to function as a business owner. I wasn't showing up to class. I was vomiting in the middle of like giving a talk, run to the bathroom because the pain was so great. And all the pills that you take for migraines weren't working for me. And so that kind of pain was the catalyst to, okay, my body is unimaginable and I can't live like this anymore. You know, I think that, that, that moment when we say I can't live like this anymore, I think that. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I will say this, I want to backtrack, um, prior to this, probably about, I don't know, five or six years beforehand, I started having a lot of other symptoms of health issues. I had something called the shingles when I was, uh, 19 years old. So, you know, that was quite young to have that. And I had uh, a lot of um, immune response things and uh, 
white blood cell count was very off and there's a lot of uh, allergy things. And at the time, I remember doing research on the internet and at the at that time, it was like the internet felt new, you know? <laughs> and so I was finding all these things about not eating as much dairy and cutting out whatever. And I brought this information to my doctor and the doctor at the time said, it is just a placebo. It has nothing to do with what you have going on. Nothing. No. I felt like an idiot, you know? <laughs> um, now, by the way, doctors are, many doctors are still that way, but there's also many that are amazing and understand nutrition more now than ever. But, you know, so it, after that, it took about six years for me to still get like, okay, I can't live this way anymore. Um, hopefully it doesn't take people six years for many. Um, it might be much shorter, but yeah. Oh, that is, it's, we, we we get that so much people are constantly looking for if they have ailments of things wrong with them that they, they you know it's it's just the way that we're wired we go to the doctors we get a pill um but i love that there is this it seems to be a growing movement in functional medicine and i've talked about this on the show with um someone previously that you know it the body is super super intelligent and it's always trying to show you signs and it's trying to tell you you know guide you on your path we just got to tune in and listen to it right yes so um i also wanted to talk to you about um you do a program which is the love yourself naked program yes is that right i'm saying yeah. it right because i think um you know the self-love um movement is growing which i think is absolutely made in but i also i i think it's for my own personal experience that yes i've done a lot of work on myself and, and self-acceptance and a lot of it is self-acceptance but yeah i do still have issues where i think do i completely love myself naked and you know there are areas of my body after having children that you know there are i still look at that my belly and i've got that layer of skin i think do i truly love that and the, the honest answer is that no that i don't so how do you you know what's what are you trying to help people achieve if they're not where they're at right now with their body and how we can start to love ourselves just as we are? It's really beautiful put. Thank you for sharing that. I, um, I would say the first part of it is that loving yourself naked, I see as a practice. You know, it's, a, it's not a destination that we get to. Like, eventually, I'll be there, you know? Yeah. And so... Uh, what that is to me, it's a, it, I mean, I have a program around it. It's called Love Your Life Academy. And, it, and so there's a, a process of being able to appreciate where you are right now. Um, it's a level of acceptance of, of self. Mm. And th there's a paradox in all of that because sometimes when people uh, consider that they might love their flabby, you know, I'm squeezing my rolls right now in my belly. <laughs> and, you know, like it, there's a there's a fear that if we surrender to accepting that now, that we might get lazy or we might not have to work mm. hard, right? And so there's there's a lot of mind mental stuff in that um, thought process. So the paradox is that we can really find acceptance and we can really practice that love of self uh, while also simultaneously. Uh, changing our thoughts and our, our and growing our emotional intelligence so then we can take action on the things that are important to us for our health or well-being or sometimes it has a lot to do with vanity too i mean let's be honest a lot of people want to look hot in the mirror or sexy in the mirror and that's important um, but my experience in doing this for a lot of years is that the person who actually really appreciates themselves in the mirror um, it's because inward they have deep acceptance of self no matter what right and so did that answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah it's actually uh, brought something else up for me because i you know I, I don't know i presume it's the same in america but here in the uk i've just seen this trend in people doing fitness competitions and you know physique bodybuilding and then 
I see them again and they're like they're now binging out and they've put all of the weight back on and more and it kind of really highlights that we you know there's so many people going for this you know this physical to look perfect to have this sort of acceptance from the outside world but yet they just revert back to if not a more disrupted behavior with or relationship with food um so this is kind of what you're talking about really it's, it's Absolutely. You know, it has so many factors of it, but the emotional eating piece, the obsessive nature that we have with changing our bodies, um, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, if somebody wants to get some Botox or breast implants, that that's a horrible thing. It's mm. just um, really understanding where we position ourselves from behind those choices. And the other thing too, is culturally, uh, it, you know, just to be blunt, the skinny, white, blonde haired woman, right, is like this cover girl for um, what we, you know, who has abs <laughs> and, right, um, you know, like that's what our culture has created as an identity for help. And it's just not true. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not true. I work with so many people who are, have all different bodies. Um, half my clients are men, actually. Um, so they want to love themselves just as much as women. And um, of all different shapes. And so our our goal, if it's if our goal is weight loss, then we, we have the wrong goal. Weight loss mm -hmm. can can be a, a byproduct or a catalyst or, or I should say a consequence to our goal. But yeah. It should be more, you know, obviously it's unique for everybody, but it, it, it's more in alignment with health and feeling peaceful about and acceptance about your body and your relationship to eating and all of those things. Completely. I, I this is, cause this is, this is my journey that I've been on. I've been the person that's been on the hunt for a six pack the whole of my life and actually never got it. But now I'm at just a, a place where I've got so much more energy. I feel fantastic. I'm obviously living in a fantastic place doing things that I love doing. And that is just have so much more importance to me now than, you know, who cares about six pack? Yeah. Like my whole philosophy is about is about is about about overcomplicate things and I guess I suppose especially in nutrition, you know, there's a lot of different ailments that I guess people come to you with. But do you find yourself that you give in kind of very similar recommendations or what I'm trying to get at is what is like the first simple step that people can really take to start making some changes? Yeah. So the first thing that I like to recommend people, this is a simple, anyone can do it, is the thought of changing your taste buds. And okay, so what happens is that, first of all, we have a lot of taste buds on our tongues and they're really powerful. And the good news is that they can shift and evolve and they can change back from sugar specifically, um, coffee, they really numb out the taste buds. And so it gets to the point for many of us is that we don't know how, we don't even know what we're tasting anymore. Why would we want to eat a salad um, and vegetables? It makes perfect sense. The reason I created, uh, it, the, it's free, a uh, seven day sugar challenge is because I wanted to give people an opportunity to take seven days and honestly, I really try to phrase it when they go through it, is take it one day at a time because it's intimidating even seven days sometimes. Um, but to take you know, a day at a time for a total of a week to cut out some of the foods that don't serve you and change your taste buds back so you can taste how sweet an orange can actually be. Because truly, um, when I did my very first cleansing kind of experience, I didn't even know what a cleanse was. This was years ago, but it was a really big wake up for me. And I remember cutting out things like sugar and gluten and dairy for a little while. And I had this thing, and 
and the orange tasted like candy. I remember like looking for the sticker in the garbage, like what kind of orange was this? Is it some special super orange? And it was just like probably Florida sun, like some rant, like nothing. It just, my taste buds had it changed so good. <laughs> so good. And I, it just, it blew my mind. It's something so simple, but it blew my mind. And so that's what I really want for people. Cause I know that, you know, seven days and going off sugar is kind of just the beginning. But if somebody can taste that, um, they can see also physically see that they have control over changing their body and their food. But they also then, the part that I don't talk enough about um, at the beginning, because I don't know that people get it until after, but they really begin to trust themselves. They begin to see that, hey, I can do this. And I was my word and it builds self-esteem and they start to have more confidence and they know that they can continue. And sometimes we need more help after that. You know, not everybody can continue on some on their own and some can, but uh, I think that's a really good start is so, you know, but by cutting out could cause inflammation in your body or that you might have allergies to or that are just overpowering your taste buds. Awesome, brilliant. I, I know I, I experience this with uh, the guys that come out with me on retreat. Sometimes they're, they're, you know, they're eating healthy food for a certain amount of days and by the end of it, they're like, I can't believe how good all this tastes because, you know, it's, I mean, healthy food can taste awesome as well, but just really, like you say, giving some power back to your taste buds of what real food tastes like so i love that really great great step um so I, i'm a huge believer in goal setting and to, to doing some planning work but i've become a little bit obsessed with morning routine just because mine since i switched it up and really got intentional about my morning routine has completely changed my life so whenever i'm speaking to people i want to know about your morning routine do you have one what's in it and you know have you noticed a difference since you created one yes i'm with you by the way i feel like it's <laughs> and the morning routine uh for me has a lot to do with um writing because that's just how I express myself. Um, and then silence of some sort. So it's either a, a meditation or a walk or, um, you know, just being in like sitting there with the journal. I find also I'm a mother. And so there's certain mornings where the morning routine is like five minutes. And sometimes um, there's mornings where, you know, he's with his father and I'm, I have like an hour. And so I always like to share that with people because I don't, want to give the impression that like every morning I wake up and I have this whole hour and it's like you're perfect because it's never perfect. <laughs> it's more about it with kids. <laughs> um, and then the morning routine uh, I find also trickles through the day where I just try to make uh, really conscious points to do things that are on um, like I have a top five list of like non-negotiable things that I need to feel peaceful and happy. <laughs> sometimes that includes dancing around. Sometimes it means like a certain food. Sometimes it's self-care, like a mask on my face. Like there's all kinds of things, but I, I try to make sure that at least every day I'm focusing on at least several of those. Yeah. yeah I love that. I think um, we can get so overwhelmed with, I've got to do this, 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 and this. But if you just have a set of a few things it's like as long as I've got a few of those in it's it's really going to help yeah. with because that's the thing for me especially as a parent because things can get crazy kids can get wild and it's just having that bit of you time first thing in the morning I find in, incredibly powerful yeah so do you also do you have sorry go on oh it just makes me grateful like you know I yeah. think that's that's the part that it inspires. I think that's important for me anyway. I feel grateful when I'm done the morning routine. And then that kind of um, trickles through the whole day versus going in where I used to be with like the stress state, like gotta go, 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 do, do, what, you know, <laughs> way different yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Um, and do you have, um, a go-to breakfast because whenever I'm getting to sort of any nutrition with people, they always want to know what's the best breakfast to have. So what's your go-to breakfast? Yes. Oh, you know, um, it's a, that's a challenging question for me. Mm. It, there's different times in my life where 
breakfast was the most important meal and I would have um, a lot of like protein, I eat eggs, mostly farm eggs. Um, I had like some kind of fruit with them or uh, like greens in some, some way. Raw food is good for me certain times of the year and other times I have to steam it. So like greens and some kind of protein are important. And then there, there's other times where um, eating breakfast, uh, I have found that I wait until like 11 a.m. and um, I eat then, you know, and I, but I drink, always drink a ton of water with lemon in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of there right now where I'm eating a little bit later and it's a phase. It won't always be that way, but it's just what I need right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I tend to not eat until a little bit like just generally because I don't feel that hungry in the morning. So yeah. like you, hi hydration is important for me first thing. So awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so is there anything at the moment that you've, anything new that you've learned or you've kind of had any aha moments recently that you thought, oh, I need to implement that with my coaching work and it's going to be like a game changer? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you know, there is an, in a sense. So one of, one of the ones that I'm working a lot with people on is emotional release and really helping them find the connection between, well, let me just say it this way. Um, I believe that your emotions are kind of where your body and your mind meet each other. And so we often don't think about it this way, but like if we are really stressed out about something, you know, it could be anything like work or we're sitting in traffic or whatever, it really affects us on a physical le level. Like there's a stress response happening and our cells are impacted in the same respect. Also, if we're in love and we're like cuddling with somebody, you know, there's also a physical response to our body. And so many times I find that clients have come up with blocks. They feel stuck or they don't have a certain amount of clarity on how to move forward and, you know, what direction to take. And there's only so much work we can do with like changing our thoughts without actually really getting clear on the emotion that we have behind it. Um, and I'll put it in a simple way. Like um, next to me is, is the book, Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. And that was my very first introductory course 20 some years ago or whenever it was into this world of personal development. And I still love that book. But one of the things that I struggled with around that at the time was that how can you say all these really cool affirmations mm -hmm. if you don't actually feel them? Like they don't mean anything. And it's really hard to feel into, like I make a simple example, but I want to feel healthy or I want to, um, I want to be wealthy, right? Like either of those, how do you really accept that affirmation and those changing of our thoughts and our words if you don't know how to really feel what it feels like. And uh, sometimes in order to get to that feeling, there's stuff that's blocking us, like old trauma and childhood wounds and this crap that we've been hanging on to that we, we really got to deal with. And feeling our emotions isn't necessarily the most exciting work, but it's so important because it, it grows our, intelli our emotional intelligence. It doesn't mean like we feel it and we hang out there and spend like the whole week as a sob story. It just means that we really allow ourselves to um, uh, use and catalyze those emotions as our superpower because they help grow our intuition. And the last thing I would say that's really helped me in my business and working with people around this is uh, urgency. You know, I was at a conference just recently and there is someone talking and he was just I'm guessing he was like 55, but he, he said, you know, if I live to be the average age of a man, which I, I'm pretty sure he intends to live longer than average, but if he only lived the average, he only has like 30 summers left to live. And when I heard that, I, was, I really, like, it really hit me that like, you know, none of us get out of here alive. And, you know, and time is one of those resources that we don't get back. And how are we really choosing to use it? And so it's really lit a, a fire under me. Not that I wasn't ambitious before, and but it just feels different that I want to really use all of my time wisely and make sure that what I'm doing now is really impactful for 
my family, for my clients, for myself, all of that, right? So, um, yeah, just urgency to live now. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's It's really about making every day count, right? In fact, I was listening to something similar. There was a guy who had done some little thing, worked out average how long he got left, and he was writing the amount of days that he had left on his wrist. So he had like 100,000 days left, and it was kind of making, am I making today count? Just that reminder to you wow. each day. So I love that. That's really powerful. Okay, so um, I'm just going to be rounding it off now and is there anything that I didn't ask you that you thought maybe you should or maybe you want to share still that we haven't already touched on um nothing's coming to my mind right now you know I I would just say that you know if people want more information about the seven day sugar detox it's winning the sugar game.com yeah I will put all of this on the show notes as well so yeah that was what I was. Um, you know, the, the reason that I named it Winning the Sugar Game, I'll just share that. Uh, name, whatever, you know, it's a seven-day sugar detox. But we're either choosing to uh, win in terms of playing a game to win, or we're just kind of dabbling, right? And so um, and I feel like it's just a metaphor for life of, like, if you're going to do something, like, really do it to win. Um, winning doesn't mean that we're first place and it's a competitive thing with somebody else. <laughs> it's really about you. Uh, but winning just means that you are all in and that it's a level of commitment and uh, a level of taking action, of creating different habits and all of that stuff. So, um, I think it's really powerful and I'm really happy. I think that's, that's get benefits. Yeah, that sounds, well, I know the programs, you know, fantastic. And I think that's a, an important point there is that it's a choice. And when you choose to take control of that, that in itself is really empowering. And that's when your confidence builds and it grows and snowballs into all sorts of awesomeness. So uh, I will put all of the information if you want to reach out or get in touch with Renee, then I'm sure she would love to connect with you or if you've got any questions, either send them over to me and I can forward them on, but I will put all of the details of how you can get in contact with her. So thank you so much for taking the time out today and thank you guys for watching and we'll still see you next time. Bye-bye.